Hello and welcome to September's What to See in a Night Sky Astronomy Podcast with me, Dwayne Alexander. In this episode, the planets, the Andromeda Galaxy, a comet and more. We start this episode with one of the brightest objects currently in the night sky, other than the moon and the sun. This is Jupiter. During September, Jupiter will appear like a bright star rising in the east after sunset and for most of the night will become obvious, high in the sky as a bright star. But just in case you're still at a loss to where to find the brightest star, well, not star, planet, in the sky, it's in the constellation of Pisces. On the 22nd, a full moon passes just above and to the right of Jupiter. Through a telescope or binoculars with a large aperture, small pinpoints will appear close to and either side of Jupiter. These will be the brightest members of the Jupiter moon system. The planet has a fast rotation and all of its clouds, including the Great Red Spot, go around the planet in around about 10 hours, meaning if you observe the entire night, you will see a lot of the detail on Jupiter in just one night. Jupiter has several bands going around the planet. These bands are different weather systems that have been stretched around the planet by the planet's speed and winds. The different heights of the systems, its latitude on the planet, the sun's radiation shining on the clouds, give each system a distinctive colour. The main belt zones and areas on the planet are as follows. We start from the north and head down south. Starting with the north polar region, then we have the north temperate belt, the north tropical zone, the north equatorial belt, the equatorial zone, the south equatorial belt, the south temperate belt, and of course the south polar region. Jupiter has made news headlines recently when a strange flash was fitted by two observers Chris Goh in the Philippines and Anthony Wesley in Australia. Turns out the strange flash was most likely a meter impact. Just shows that Jupiter can throw up unexpected surprises. Then, while the pre-mentioned belts on Jupiter faded, the South Equatorial Belt, this has happened before and is unpredictable. The reasons for why this happens and what to- and why it seems to happen randomly are still not understood. But in the past, the faded South Equatorial Belt has violently returned over the period of a few months to even a year, with many interesting details to be observed, such as dramatic dark and bright areas in the area where the South Equatorial Belt should be. This could happen at any time, from the next couple of months to the next year. Jupiter is definitely a planet to keep an eye on, and with Jupiter directly opposite the Sun from our viewpoint in space, now has never been a better time to start observing this planet. Now, have you seen Uranus? You haven't? Well, there's a good chance of seeing it coming up. Uranus is right on the limit of naked eye visibility in very dark skies, and easily overlooked. So I recommend you get some binoculars on a tripod or a telescope. Focus the binoculars on Jupiter on the night of the 21st, and just above Jupiter is a faint greeny object. This will be the planet Uranus. There isn't much detail to be seen on Uranus, apart from its greeny colour. But I find observing the planet as a bit more of a challenge and further away, something a bit special. Moving on now to the other planets this month. Have you seen Mercury? You haven't? Well, there's another opportunity rising, literally, this month. Mercury will be visible rising above the eastern horizon between the 8th and 19th of this month, reaching its highest point in the morning skies at sunrise on the 19th, showing an magnitude minus 0.3 and 18 degrees west of the Sun. From the 19th to the 5th of October 2010, it makes its way back down towards the horizon again. I recommend viewing this planet from a location with a low and clear eastern horizon just before sunrise, around the 17th and 29th of September, as this will mean the planet will be at its highest point in the sky and at its brightest, and most easy to see as a result. But please, please remember, never look at the Sun, even with the naked eye, and most Definitely not with binoculars and a telescope, or less projected in some way, as this will cause eye damage. Now looking across to the opposite side of the sky, in the west-southwest horizon, now if you know where that is, the sun sets roughly west, so look slightly south or to the left of where the sun sets, and that gives you roughly west-southwest, there will be three planets, Saturn, Venus and Mars. Mars and Venus will be near the bright star Spica in Virgo, this will appear bright, where Spica and Mars will be a similar brightness as each other, but much dimmer than Venus. Also in Virgo, which is the constellation where these three planets are, but more to the west, or to your right, is Saturn. 
Saturn will be a similar brightness to Mars and Spica, but due to being close to the Sun's glare after sunset, will be a bit more tricky to see. All three planets are visible on the 1st of September 2010, around 30 minutes after sunset, and will be hugging the western horizon. I mean, once again, you need a clear and low west-southwest horizon to see these planets. Also in the sky is a comet. Comet 103P Hartley is predicted to brighten from magnitude plus 8.7 to 5.8 in September and may be spotted using binoculars. Comet Hartley passes with the constellations of Northern Pegasus, Andromeda and Intercassiopeia. However, the Moon will make few and difficult in the last week of September. For those not experienced with the night sky, you may wish to try on either side or on the night of the 30th of September. This is because the comet will lie close to the constellation of Cassiopeia, which looks a bit like a W in the night sky. The comet will lie close to and just below the bottom star in the right hand V that makes up the W of the constellation of Cassiopeia in the night sky. This star is called Shedder. If you view this star through binoculars, just visible near to it will be a, a faint fuzzy patch. This faint fuzzy patch will be the comet. The comet is expected to brighten further during October, but as often the case with comets, they often don't follow predictions for brightness, but it's still worth a look all the same. Staying with the same area of the sky, we now head to our nearest galaxy in space. The Andromeda Galaxy lies in the constellation it is named after, Andromeda. To find Andromeda, you need to go back to the constellation Cassiopeia. Once again, go back to the star, Shida. And now draw an imaginary straight line across the sky towards that bright star, which isn't a star, the planet Jupiter. you notice on doing this, the line passes by another brightest star roughly halfway between the two. This is Alpha Ras in the great square Pegasus. Leading away from the star towards the constellation to the left of Cassiopeia called Perseus is two lines of stars. This is Andromeda. Now go back to your imaginary line and roughly halfway between Shida and Cassiopeia and Alpha Ras in the great square Pegasus you'll notice just to the left of your imaginary line is a faint fuzzy patch as seen in dark skies. Just to the left of that is the stars of Andromeda. That faint fuzzy patch is the Andromeda galaxy also known as M31. Through binoculars, more detail is visible, and even more through a large telescope. Now we move on to the Moon and the phases of what's September 2010. As usual, it's summer, so all times are in BST. Last half is 1st of September at 6.22pm. The Moon will rise at 10.36pm and will set at 2.54pm. New Moon is on the 8th of September at 11.30am. Rises at 6.28 a.m. and sets at 7.02 p.m. First half is on the 15th of September at 6.50 a.m. It rises at 3.29 p.m. and will set by 11.06 p.m. Full moon is on the 23rd of September at 10.17 a.m. It will rise at 6.27 p.m. and will set at 6.59 a.m. Well, that's it for this podcast. Remember, you can watch these podcasts as podcasts on YouTube. There's also star charts and links to other websites on my website. The website is www.djmysterious.5u.com forward slash astronomy.html. Don't forget .html because it won't work otherwise. Um, I'm Dwayne Alexander. Once again, thank you for listening to the podcast. Clear skies.